met each other when we were both attending the University of Washington and we're both involved in starting up the student farm there and talked about maybe we would farm together someday and that ended up happening a few years later here. And when we got here it was a really different space and um, it's been in a process, an ongoing process of, of sort of transformation. I'm so excited to share that with you. There's a lot of debate about what exactly regenerative is. And, and I think that for us, when we practice regenerative agriculture, for us, it means that we're, we're focusing a lot on grazing and growing the productivity of the entire landscape through grazing. We're focusing on uh, compost as one of the primary ingredients that runs the fertility of our farm. We're thinking a lot about the fungal communities in our soil and reducing at every opportunity that we can our mechanical disturbance of the soil to not quite zero, but as close as we can get. So trying to figure out like how much do we actually earn by crop per square foot of that crop on our farm. And that analysis was really useful to us because it helped us like make some decisions about just crops that don't really make sense for us to grow even. We, we grow almost all of our starts in soil blocks, which... Um... They're like little plant brownies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you, you can imagine me here with a tub full of moist potting soil into which I would press this in order to have soil come up from the bottom and fill this grid. And then there's the reason that I call it the ice cream scoop is that the plunger then pushes the blocks out. This fence is great for us so we can create small paddocks and move our goats through the small areas and they'll graze uh, and then we move them in. And part of that is in order to manage the grass so that it gets eaten once and then it ha it doesn't get eaten again until it's had a lot of time to re-acclimate and regrow and that, to regenerate, right, that cycle of growth and decay is what stores carbon in the soil, right? So it, it gets grazed and then it draws on its reserves of roots and then it, it grows fast and then it rebuilds those roots and the roots go deeper and the roots are actually depositing carbon in the soils. And so, When we first started growing goat, we didn't have a lot of market for it, but um, the last time we butchered our goats, we sold all the meat that we had and we got a really good price for it. And we made... Uh, I think between 45 and 50 yards of compost here. And we probably used another 120 yards of compost on the farm. So we use a lot of compost. So we built this structure with cost share funds uh, that came through the conservation district. And those cost share funds are related to try to help farms deal with manure issues or other problems that evolve. It's covered though for a lot of great reasons and this was part of the cost share is that if it's covered it's not getting any rain on it so that the runoff from this system isn't getting out into the watershed and that's giving us a maximum return on the nitrogen in the pile right so it's it's dry that nitrogen's not getting lost um, and we're not especially not losing it right to the little creek here that then runs down to the Max Walton Beach. Now that we're learning more about how soils work, we're realizing when you send it off to get tested, you look at only what's there from an abiotic perspective, only from all the, you, you learn about how much organic matter is in the soil by burning the organic matter off, right? But what we find out is that there are a lot of recalcitrant uh, nutrients and recalcitrant minerals that are in soils that the whole uh, biology, the microbiome of the soil has evolved to feed the plants what they need. And so we're moving away from this sort of chemical reaction like 
add this much nitrogen, add this much uh, lime to ameliorate the pH, to do these things to cultivate the bacterial and fungal community that helps your plants mine the nutrients that's and the nutrition that's already in your soils. And the idea is that that organic matter is what's fueling everything, but that's what's getting broken down by all of the, the by the soil food web, and through that process, um, different nutrients are becoming available to plants. So it matters to feed the soil a nicely balanced set of food, but a, a snapshot in time of what's soluble in that soil, if it, if it is a living soil, is not a complete picture of what a plant is going to experience in its lifetime. This way is all work that we've been working on and running down that way is all work we've been working on trying to move the blackberry away and just kind of make space for native plants and then plant a bunch of plants that we're getting uh, through the conservation district. So it's very exciting to see this riparian buffer, which, you know, eight years ago was in, impenetrable blackberry. And now there's red osier dogwood. Yeah, you can't, you couldn't get there. There's um, also berry, there's red pollen called stun. Um, the stun and then a bunch of berries. She has total butter. What we'll do is we'll come through and mow this really low, low to the ground. Over there if where we the need tarp this been on, plant right away, uh, like without compost, in the next the, couple of the, weeks, the, the grass we can take like, the compost still and put the grow, compost on top of the like, grass that was It's mowed. actually kind of warm under there, and, and then it's like, oh, put a tarp grow. on top of that. And those things together seem to really knock the grass back, and we have to wait about two weeks before we can plant into that. This system works so well because we just are constantly adding to the top, and what we hadn't realized was what a difference that makes like we spend so much less time weeding on this farm like we do have weeds um, but like it's really different now than it was three years ago when we were tilling because the weeds are the seeds of the weeds are just down below the layer of compost so we don't they're not coming up to the surface they're not germinating they're like and that when the weeds go down then it's so much easier to turn a bed over, right? Because you, you don't have to, it's, you don't have to till because there weren't weeds. You just pull the crop out, harvest the crop or cut it down and plant again. And that, if you can do that, mow it and plant again, you can leave the roots there and the roots are still exuding sugars for the bacteria. So that's giving a jump in terms of that mining work of getting nutrition for the young plants leaving that system in place and just planting right on top of it. Maybe that's why the interns don't leave. <laughs>